And now what do we want to do with the display? Um, this is a bit more difficult. So let's have a look at my uh, sheet of paper. It says show the average amps, the time taken and the capacity. So we've got the battery voltage, the amperage, the current time and the average amperage. So we've got the average amperage, so that's fairly easy. Uh, current time. I assume current time is the amount of time taken, I think. Oh no, it's not. It's the it's actually the current time since the thing was turned on. So, hmm, a bit more work needs to be done there. And of course, the capacity. So we need both of these. So I'm going to copy these two and put them over here in uh, menu five. So what have we got here? So we want to see the average amps first. So that's probably going to be 16 and that will probably be 24. Now there's something that I haven't done which I need to do. Um, this millis thing here, this is milli, whatever it is, where is it? Yeah, current time here. This current time, I think, is from when the Arduino was turned on, and that's, of course, uh, not relevant, because we don't want to know when it's turned on. We want to know, um, you know, we, we want to know how long it's been going for. So, um, what we have to do is we'll need another variable, which will say something like drain start time or something like that. So drain start time, and this will be set by the pressing of the button on number two. So where's number two? Display menu four. So wherever display menu four is, here. So draining equals true. And let's say drain start millis. Drain start millis equals millis. So drain start, oops, I put a put brackets in there. So drain start millis equals whatever the time is when somebody happens to press the button to start draining. So drain start millis, I'll need another variable for that. Right, uh, here long, unsigned long, drain start millis equals zero. Drain start millis. And then back down here, we need something to say drain stop millis. And that'll be in menu five. So draining equals false. Drain stop millis. Drain stop millis equals millis. And of course we need a variable for that. So drain stop millis. Drain start millies, drain stop millies. Drain stop millies. Right, and where are we now? So we've got the drain start, drain stop. And therefore, if we take one from the other, we can find out how long the whole thing was. So, um, where will we do that? I suppose we'll do that here. So we'll say, um, unsigned long duration equals drain stop millies take away drain start millies drain stop take away drain start and that should give us the amount of milliseconds which the whole thing was draining for now um, we also need another variable to convert this to make it more useful. So um, unsigned, uh, it doesn't really need to be a long, um, let's say int, unsigned int equal, oops, uh, this is going to be duration, in fact that should be duration millis. I don't know why I keep doing that. Duration millis, so this is duration seconds now. Duration seconds is the duration of millis divided by 1000. And that might actually come up with a problem, but we'll see. 
right? So duration millis, duration seconds, and then we need, um, well, minutes really. So duration seconds, duration minutes. Duration minutes is seconds divided by, oops, duration seconds divided by 60. So we've got the minutes now. So we've got the average amperage and we've actually got the time too. So the time taken, uh, does that need to be a string? I think it probably does actually. So duration in minutes. So we've got the, the average amperage over the whole time and we've got the duration of minutes, how long it take it took to get from four point whatever volts to three volts. Right, so we want to display these to screen and we actually are displaying them to screen here, but with no um, with no label. So um, this is gonna be average amp amps really, average amps time taken. time taken and now we need to show the actual capacity and I suppose this is the exciting bit really so 24 so 16 24 will be 36 down and capacity capacity okay so time for some maths now in order to work out the capacity now I've not actually googled this so I'm not too sure. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I mean, my maths knowledge is, is pretty good, so let's go for it. Um, if you have one amp average and it takes 60 minutes to drain, then you've got a capacity of one, uh, sorry, one amp hour. So one amp for one hour, and therefore the capacity is one amp hour. So if you have one amp for 120 minutes then the capacity is obviously one amp for two hours so and one hour one amp for two hours is two amp hour and if we were to say uh, we have two amps for 30 minutes two amps for 30 minutes then it's the equivalent of one amp for one hour or you could say the reason it's one amp for one hour is because if you multiply that by two, then it would be less. It would be half the amount of amps. So therefore, that is also one amp hour. And uh, if we do two amps for one hour, two amps for sixty minutes, that is two amps for an hour. So two amps for an hour, two amp hour, and. I don't know about you, but with plugging in these uh, these scenarios here, I can see a pattern. And the pattern is this. If you get that, that figure there, and divide that by 60, and multiply it by that, it equals that. So for example, 60 divided by 60 is 1. 60 divided by 60 is 1. So we just write there 1. 1 multiplied by 1 equals 1 and it works. So here 120 minutes divided by 60 equals 2 and 1 multiplied by 2 equals 2. Over here uh, 30 minutes divided by 60 is 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 and 2 multiplied by 0 0.5 is 1 and over here 60 divided by 60 is 1 and 2 multiplied by 1 is 2. So there we have it. So we know the formula, and the formula is uh, duration divided by 60 multiplied by uh, average amps. And let's just put those in there just to uh, uh, make it more clear. So there we go. So that's the formula. So to start with, Duration in minutes divided by 60. Duration in minutes divided by 60. And we'll put brackets on that again. Multiplied by the average amps. 
equals capacity and it seems to be as simple as that um, so there is one thing about this it's in amp hour and we probably don't want it in amp hour we probably want it in milliamp hour so that's pretty easy um, there are a thousand milliamps in an amp so therefore we multiply this whole thing by a thousand so I'll add another set of brackets multiply by a thousand you don't have to add the brackets by the way I do it just uh, to make things easy I think it's mentally easier to do it that way um, and I've just noticed that bracket needs to go there for, for string so there we go so that's the formula and hopefully that will work so it's probably going to take me some time to test this out but I'm going to upload it now and we'll see what happens all right and um, just before I finish this video I want to do a few easy changes so the first thing is um, down here uh, where it starts up in setup I've incorrectly typed high it needs to start low but that's not all we're going to do so I'll just leave that as low for now because of course when we start the um, device up I don't want the I don't want the load to be on I don't want it to start draining straight away um, when we are testing that's fair enough but now we don't want it to do that um, so now the other thing we want to do is if you just copy that we want to go down here and make another function so I'll say void um, what should we say turn load on and we want oops wrong way um, turn load on bool uh, on and then in here we'll paste that line and we want on to be there so turn turn load on and we'll give it a bool so we say true or false and then it basically does the um, the digital write for us uh, within this function so now we can call the function throughout the whole program and we won't have to repeat the code so uh, turn the load on true means yes turn it on and false means turn it off so let's go back copy that and go back over here wherever it is here so at the very start we want to turn it on false we want to turn it off in other words and um, there's a couple of other things we could do while we're there as well um, now there's some stuff like uh, show the LED and all this sort of stuff so uh, turn load on and turn load off so that is also uh, going to do some other changes if I can just find them here they are right so transistor pin so display menu 5 so this is where uh, it's finished finished its job so we'll see turn load off uh, sorry turn load on false in other words turn it off um, we're going to cut these two lines out of here so turn load on false in other words turn it off because in menu 5 it's finished and now let's go back over here uh, wherever it is and let's just double check this turn load on false that's good now over here um, we don't need that line but we will use this line so this one here draining LED pin on is going to be the same as on so so if we were to call this now and we say turn it off then it says the draining pin is off the transistor pin is off if it says on then turn load on on then it turns the draining LED pin on and it turns the transistor um, pin on otherwise off of course so it makes sense um, now there's another thing we need to do uh, in menu 4 we need to turn it on so in menu 4 that's when we start draining so we want to turn load on so menu 4 um, we want to say draining equals true in fact that can probably move as well so turn load on true and right draining equals true do we want that on yeah I suppose I suppose we do so draining can also go into turn load on um, where is that there it is so draining equals whatever on is and let's see if there are any other instances uh, where we set draining to something um, draining equals false so menu 5 um, yep that's dealt with there so we can get rid of that where else do we call it if anywhere else if draining no we don't assign to it we just use it there 
Um, draining equals false. Right, so what's this now? Where is this? Is this? Oh, this is at the very start. Okay. Draining equals false. That's fine now then. Draining LED pin. Draining. Yeah, so everything's good there. So let's go back down to menu 4. So this is where we turn it on, which is right now. This display thing, um, we've got some work to do here as well, but I don't know if I want to deal with that at the moment. Um, this display line actually, in one of my previous videos, I'd, I'd moved it down to, to here, I think, but it doesn't really matter, so yeah, whatever. Now I'm thinking that if we're in menu 4, which is the drain screen, um, we want to abort it, then since the, the push button doesn't actually do anything in menu 4, then why don't we make the push button abort the, uh, the drain and go straight to the summary screen? Seems to make sense, because maybe you want to uh, change the cell or whatever, or you just want to abort it. So, um, so let's deal with that now as well. Um, so it'll be in the loop. Um, should be very simple. It should be uh, simply display menu five. So, if you press the button in menu four, which is the drain screen, it should go to menu five. And menu five, uh, if we just revisit this menu five, it, sh it will clear the display, set the menu, uh, set the drain stop millies. Um, I suppose the drain stop could go in here as well actually but we'll go back to that in a minute um, then yeah it says complete is true it puts the complete pin well I suppose that's a little bit misleading really because it wouldn't be complete but um, I don't know it seems to make sense doesn't it so yeah if you press the button in menu 4 it then becomes a bot so uh, that gives me another idea uh, let's put drain stop millies into uh, turn load on uh, function so turn load on function we'll put that there let's see if there are any more occurrences of this thing drain stop millies no that's okay there that's okay there uh, turn load on no that's what we've just done so uh, that's good so far so good now there's another thing we'll need to do um, where were we? Right, yeah, here. Uh, I don't know if it's a, a problem as such, but I think it would be better to turn it off there and then do the calculations afterwards. So I'll make a change there as well. Okay, and um, and there's of course one more thing, uh, one more common sense thing that we need to do, and that is um, over here. If we're in menu five, which is a summary, and the button's pressed, then we want to go back to menu one, which is the main menu if you like. Uh, in menu 1 we want to do something else too, we want to reset the um, you know the, the LEDs, the completed LED in particular so um, let's play menu 1 so where's the stuff about the completed uh, LED completed LED, I think it might be an idea to make another uh, function for completed LED on um, so let's see where uses the completed LED. Complete is true. Complete LED there in menu five. So yeah, I think I will make another one of those. So let's go back up here. Turn load on. And let's say completed. Completed. That will do. And then over here, completed. Then where are those two lines? Completed there. So I'll cut those out and completed. Um, well, it, this menu here, menu five, it'll be true. So completed true. Control T, Control S, and then back over here, completed. We'll just stuff that in there. Completed goes here and here. So completed, true. So complete equals true. And then digital right to the LED pin, true, which means high. Um, so yeah, 
Now if it's low of course, so completed no, then complete equals false, and digital write low or false, which means off. So that should be good. So what else do we need to do here? Um, menu 1, we need to say completed is false, just in case it's not already. False. Control T, Control S. Now we may be able to use it over here as well. Um, no, it looks like it's not not necessary actually. So, all right, uh, we're good. So, Control T, Control S, Control U. Let's upload and see how it looks. Okay, everyone, this is getting a bit exciting now because when we're, we're almost near the end. Anyway, um, I've got my ammeter. And I've got the project, of course. Now, um, the reason why I've got the ammeter is because I want to double check that when this thing should be off, it is off. And I want to check that when it should be on, it is actually on. You know, the drain, because otherwise you wouldn't know. Anyway, what I'm going to do is zoom into the OLED and um, we'll start testing the menu out. Now, at this point, the menu's still not finished. Um, but that's okay, as long as we're aware of it. Now we've kind we've finished menu one, we've finished menu two, we've finished menu three. There's menu four and five left to do, but we've done the basics. All right, so uh, let's start. So when I press the button, it should say, um, well, in fact, let's just turn this off and then back on. So we get the hello screen. Insert cell now and press from ready. So I've inserted the cell. Press now. And it says the cell voltage 4.3, which is not actually entirely accurate. We might have to sort that out. If it says 4.3, press the start. So press start, and there we go. So the draining LED is now on. It's coming up with some um, specifics there. So it's saying the voltage, the amperage, the amount of drain time, and some sort of uh, sum. I can't remember exactly what that is. Um, so that's menu 4, which is the drain uh, screen, as I call it. Now if I press the button again, it'll go to the summary, which is menu 5. And uh, then the draining LED should go off and the completed LED should go on. So let's check that. Perfect. So, like I said, the screen for, well, the menu uh, number 5 is not finished. So it's just as time taken. It's a load of rubbish, to be quite frank at the moment. But the LED has worked and the menu system is working. So if I press it again, it should go back to menu 1. And it does. And the completed pin's gone off. So uh, it's looking very good. Um... So I'm happy up to now. The next video will go over, uh, hopefully, finishing off menu 4 and 5. So thank you for watching. Bye.